Hello. I wanted to record that I just got inside from doing my running and I was having real, real problem with self-talk. And you know what I was thinking, even my negative self-talk is positive. Well, I'll explain. Um, it's telling me, don't even bother running. It's not doing you any good because I'm not getting tired at all. And it's basically, I'm just doing it because I said I'd keep doing it. But I did that with my exercise bike too. I did that for half an hour every day because I said, if you exercise for half an hour every day, it'll be good for you. And I didn't lose a pound. In fact, I gained weight. And... I was thinking, yeah, that's the same thing. I don't feel like anything has happened. I don't feel like I've changed at all, but maybe I have, but I've gained weight. Okay, I haven't gained weight. I've lost weight, but not considerable amounts of weight. I've lost like three to five pounds in a week. I've done that a couple times. So I, total, I've only lost about six pounds. It's not really, not really, uh. anyway, my negative self-talk that was getting to me today was saying, you know, no matter what you try to do, it's not going to make a difference because your children look to you as a role model and your daughter is going to be a little heavy and she, if you get skinny and lose all this weight and she tries and fails, she'll be depressed for the rest of her life and you don't want her to be depressed or upset so you are not losing weight and you think uh that's not really a thing yes it is i know my son is all about losing weight because his dad is and he even he likes to go running because that's what i do and i told him one day that he needs to eat his scrambled eggs in the morning because he needs that protein for the day. So now if I don't, like we didn't have any eggs today and he was like, where are my eggs? He doesn't ever eat his eggs anyway, but he, he has to have like some of them. He's like, I need my protein. Anyway. So, but my, and I'm not even going to share that because that's too personal, but there's lots of comments that my children have said to me and when my daughters were in their eight, eight, nine, it's like the oldest one was about eight. Only one had just been baptized, so the oldest one was nine, and she was eight. They were wearing the same size clothes as I was. I lent them my clothes because there's a really funny thing. There was a school picture. They gave me copies of their school picture, and they both had the same shirt on in the school picture. I'm like, how did you manage that? Because at our school they do pictures all in one day everybody has pictures on one day i'm like did you stand there and, and it was one of my shirts that i lent them and i thought that was funny but mary i think mary's clothes are bigger than mine she's eight years old but so i really don't want to lose weight because like, Jokey's just very healthy, but when I was younger, I would have thought he was fat, but he's very healthy, and I was thinking, I'm not going to be allowed to lose weight because they're more important than I am, and I need to put them ahead of me, and I've been doing that. That's why I've been struggling. A whole, that's why I'm saying it. my negative self-talk has been telling me, uh, don't place yourself first, because that's what I was trying to do. And it's like, don't place yourself first. My idea was, if they see that I'm important to me, then maybe they'll be important to themselves. Because I feel like they're waiting, they're depending on me to do things that they need to do, and I want them to do them for themselves. But, so I'm not able to lose weight because I'm not supposed to lose weight. Because if I was really skinny, it would cause them to be depressed and feel bad when they see themselves and they're like, well, my mom's skinny, why am I not skinny? And I don't even want them to worry about that because they're beautiful and I don't want them to, 
people are just made differently. I happen to be a skinny person. And, you know, I saw a YouTube video years ago where this person was a comedian and they were saying, so where do, where do skinny and fat people meet anyways? They don't even hang out in the same places. Doesn't because they were saying, well, people would just automatically get bigger and bigger and bigger because big people would marry big people and skinny people marry skinny people, so they get skinnier and they would never mix, but yet they do. And it just goes to show the fact that, well, they're, they've been trying to prove that there is no genetic disposition for people being unhealthy. We all look different. We're all different heights and different hair colors and eye colors and um, ways. Now, my children are shaped differently than I am, but you know, the whole world is. That's one of the things that gets me all ticked off is clothing. Even when I was really skinny, I remember some people saying, yeah, Mary, Melissa, I'm sorry calling myself Mary. Melissa, you look like a model. You'd be a model for Benetton. Benetton was known for having really weird looking models and they're like yeah if you were a model you'd be like one of those supermodels the ones that nobody really looks like because they admitted that i i looked okay but i just look weird and that's still the case i i just don't look normal and my kids don't either and anyway that was my negative self-talk it was that you can't lose weight. Stop trying. So, I've gone back to just being healthy and happy and focusing. All the time that I would waste running, I, I waste about 20 to 30 minutes a day running when I could be using it to focus on things that I could be doing for the kids. And one thing that I heard this week that was really insightful, the whole, like, we spend a lot of time in the morning reading things and doing all different, improving in different areas, not just physical fitness. There are other areas, sets is what they come up with, spiritual, intellectual, physical, and social. And so, there was, we, we do our, I guess the best thing to call it would be like a morning devotional. We have a morning prayer and read our scriptures and that they said the whole idea behind it is to remind them what should be the center of their being and what they should be try striving for and I'm like oh you know we are doing that and improving spirituality but I'm like so what are we supposed to do so when I pray and I tell them okay keep keep these things in your mind and see how they play out and use them in your judgment when you have when you're making choices but somebody said one thing that like repentance people think of repentance as oh you do something wrong so yes forgiveness is it's painful it's something we don't want to do that's not so really all it is is changing and so what i'm reminding and they say use that morning time to focus them on how they need to repent and what they need to do so instead, what I'm doing, instead of just saying, have a great day every morning, I'm telling them, be perfect. And then we, we've talked a whole lot about the only way you can become perfect is changing. And if you make a choice, oh, we, I want a whiteboard or something to draw on. Anyway, the way I was thinking of it is like a switchboard or something. Okay, you've got these people and they want to go in a straight line, right? They're progressing. They are moving. So they make a choice. One makes a bad choice, one makes a good choice. So the good choice is heading where it needs to go. Well, the bad choice, they're going that. Now, if they make a good choice, they turn a little this way. They're still never going to make the destination because of that bad choice. The only way they can change it, they can do that is if they change and repent, then they can head back towards they were, where they were going. I've noticed that a lot in my life. There's choices I've made that have just been bad, and until I fix them, there's nothing I could have done. So, 
is to remind them that they're not helpless and hopeless. They can, they can become perfect and that's what they need to do. So anyway, did I ever talk about my self talk? Okay. And so my, I said this before, but I'm going to use, I'm going to stop exercising 30 minutes every day and use my time more wisely. And instead what I'm going to do is every time I want to eat something, instead of exercising, I'll think, oh, you can only eat one meal a day because that had the biggest effect of anything I've ever done. The biggest effect was only eating one meal a day. I'll tell you one thing our kids discussed this morning that was so profound. We were talking about hamsters and how Mary's hamster died, and she thinks it's because it was so big. And uh, Joseph said it was obesity. It died of obesity. And I said, no. And we started thinking. I said, now think about cramps. If you wanted to live longer, it doesn't matter. You wouldn't think a, a small cram would live, work longer than a bigger cram. But when you have a bigger cram, you push a little harder. It's easier to push hard. But the harder you push, the shorter its life is going to be. And that's the same thing with us. Exercising enough is good because it builds your muscles and your heart and everything. But if you push your push yourself too much and you speed up and you have too much energy, then it's like you burn out quicker. So we need to find a balance. Anyway, I, I hadn't even thought of that before, but that was the insightful thing that the kids thought of. Bye.